Okay. Oh, was this? No, this is not Octavius. This is Maurice. Okay, Maurice says, I use power options to place a call on ENPH. I think we were looking at it last week. Bought shares at 35.29 and on 2.4. Placed a covered call on 3.5 expiration strike of 50. Got a premium of 8.69. Okay. All right, let's just enter this. I'm going to enter it in a different portfolio, Maurice. And we're going to follow the same patterns, okay? Um, let's use return test. I'm sorry, I forgot. I was on my account. My apologies. I was looking for that roll covered call. But let's just go back to the webinar account in this case. I just wanted to make sure that we saw uh, the examples there for Ben and what I was looking for. And we're going to get more advanced on that in the near future for Blueprint owners and Fusion subscribers as well, Radioactive Trading. Let's get back to our portfolio there, Maurice. And let's go to our rolling covered calls portfolio just to keep things in the same session. We have a covered call position. I'm going to select that from our enter new position. We have EN, whoa, sorry folks. Let's try that again without hitting control. <laughs> ENPH, shares are relevant, but we'll just put in 100 shares. I know you'd have a different share block, but the math is going to be the same, essentially. And you said 224, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, 24, I'm sorry, not 224, that would be 24. And your price per share was 35.29. Now, recently we sold the March 20th expiration, 50 for 8.69. <clears throat> you did that on 3.5. Oh, you did that yesterday. Okay. All right. There's our covered call position. Entered nice and neat. Submit that. <coughs> Excuse me. Your original position had an expected... Okay, I'm sorry. Your original position had an... Ex... I didn't see that. Yeah, you, you sold a 50 strike. Stocks at 53.05. You, your cost base was 35.29. Okay. So... You get $15 profit almost at that, plus the $8. So yeah, you're looking at an 88% return on a covered call. You could liquidate right now for a 73.5% gain. And if the stock stays where it is, you make 88% of your cost basis on the position. Getting assigned at 50, okay? Today, MPH is at 59.2, okay? And you said, what is happening on 320 to that position? Okay, well, if, I don't know. What I do know, Maurice, is if the stock stays where it is right now, you're going to be assigned. You're going to make the $2,300 off an investment of $2,660. Okay. What do, what do I mean by that? You paid $3,529 for the stock and you collected $869, which brought your cost basis down to $2,660 for the entire trade. You get assigned at $50. You get $50 back. Profit of $2,340 on a true cost of $2,660 or 88%. Okay. So... Looking pretty good there in this case. You could liquidate right now for a 73% gain. But is there something going on? Well, let me take a look. Let's go to position actions. I'm sorry, no. Let's go to research first, stock research. I don't know this trade. I know it came up uh, in the past on some of the picks of the day that we looked at. Well, earnings are unconfirmed. It shows at 428, but it hasn't been confirmed. But that's the next expected earnings. Um, it, it could be any number of things that are coming up based on just standard volatility, volatility in the markets, um, uh, or other things as well in that case. So looking at that, Maurice, it's um, uh, Sam says he, he's actually in that as well. Uh, he's in ENPH well, and the, and the, sorry, ENPH as well, and the shares are holding up well. So I don't see anything out of the blue. I'd always want to do further research, though, check when the last earnings were maybe, and see if I expect that, or see if there's any other news. You could always go to the company information news, look through the recent headlines. But again, right now you're pretty good. Of course, you could probably lock in some of this gain with a put position. You could evaluate rollout opportunities just as we did before, but going to the position analysis view. And this is a pretty interesting one. Whether, yeah, we have to wait till Monday anyway. A lot of investors have this rule. Right? We have the 80-20 rule. Some even use a 70-30 rule. What that is, is that if you've made 80% of what you expected on the position, in other words, I sold a bull put credit spread for a dollar on a five-point spread, and I can go ahead and close it today as I'm nearing expiration for 20 cents, 
well, I've made 80 cents or 80% of the full dollar I expected to make. If I still have 10 or 14 is left, I might as well take that off the table. What this is showing you is that your current liquidation value is 73.5%. Meaning if you bought to close the call, I saw a price around 507 and sold to close the stock, you'd have a profit of 1955. 73.5% of your cost base is 2660. Or 83.5% of the max return you expect to make in 14 days. This might fall into the 80-20 rule depending on your trading plan. In other words, you could liquidate right now and make 80% of what you expected to make on this trade, not have to worry about what happens in the next 14 days, up or down. But if you wanted to look at some rollout opportunities, they're shown for you. We could roll out to April 17th to get a higher adjusted net credit. It uh, looks like we'd buy to close our call for 690. And we could sell the, uh, oh, I apologize. We sold it for 869. We could buy it back now for, for 690. Then I get a new credit of $8, which would put my total at $9.79. Or I could go to higher strikes, which give me a higher potential return, but not as high as a net credit. You could roll further out to May, look at a high potential return at 50, but then again, now we're talking about 70 days of time in an uncertain market. But what are you expecting right now? You've made 83.5% of the max. You could liquidate the position for a 73.5% return. If you hold it to expiration and the stock stays above 50, you'll make the full expected profit in 14 days of 88%. Original investment of 2660, and you'd get 50 back for a turn of 2340 in that case. Okay, so that's what's happening now. This is what could happen at expiration. What could also happen is the stock drops back down to 35. Your call expires worthless. But hey, you still have a cost basis of 2660. You could continue to sell calls against it. Your break even is at 2660. So I think you're looking pretty good right now in this situation. Take a large drop for you to hit the break even point. Okay? But that's what the portfolio tools help you do. Evaluate where you're where you stand right now, what you originally expected what your current liquidation value is, what your future expiration value is if the stock stays at the same price, and you know right here this is your break even, the stock can fall to 2660 before you start losing money on the position. All right, so that's the benefit of the portfolio tools there, Maurice, and I think that's uh, where you can stand right now and what you can do. You can also evaluate those rollout opportunities if you wanted to move more and further out as well, okay? Oh, and Ben says, yeah, I, I did mention that in this case when we were just looking at that end phase position. You could add a put option in this position, probably pretty cheap, at those lower strike prices to lock in some of the gains. You've got a March 20. That'll be expensive. See, this is the problem with some of these high volatility bins, but you know that. You've, you've been there and done that. And um, I'll just use this tool. But, you know, we saw we could close this for about 860 right? So I've got about $2.09 profit on this position. Oh, geez. Unrealized. Unrealized. If I could buy a 75 cent 40 put right now for the same expiration, this is going to convert your covered call into a collar. It's going to take away from your upside. But wow. A no risk collar for the small price, 75 cents at midpoint, buying the 20th of March 40 put, you create a no risk bulletproof collar with a guaranteed return of 46.3% and still a max return if assigned at 50 of 82.8%. How can you lose? You can't. You're in a bulletproof position by converting it to a collar. So Ben, I did mention that, but thank you for bringing it up. See an example of it, of what you could do. This is a pretty good position to be in one direction or the other, especially in an uncertain market. All right, Sam, I'm going to get to your comment that applies to a lot of what we've been talking about in just a minute, but we have another question via email from Octavio that's still with us, and he's been waiting patiently. Octavio says, I just joined the site today. need help on using the insurance tool, trying to protect 700 shares of VIXY at 1090. Excellent. Similar to what we could have done with ENPH, but it's the covered call position, so I wouldn't have used the insurance tool to do this. I think this is a beautiful looking trade. Um, again but let's go here let's go to that married put tab and right, we're talking about some of these positions here 
That's the structure that we use. The blueprint is the full work that describes our preferred structure for starting a married put trade with a minimal risk of 4 or 5 or 6% and the 12 adjustments that we want to use to bulletproof it. But Octavio's question is more along the lines of one of these specific tools that we have. 700 shares of VXY at 1090. So I'm going to go into the insurance tool. And all this tool does is ask me for my stock symbol and a cost basis. Now this might be a little bit more volatile, so I might not see what I want. But I'm not going to worry about selling the call now, Octavio. I'm just going to leave that at none. I just want to see my protection. So I'm going to buy a put. And for right now, since I don't know VIXY, I'm going to leave it at all expirations. It's going to show me everything near term, far term, and beyond. All right. So let's hit calculate. You have an unrealized profit of 1343 or 123.2%. This is the VIX short-term futures ETF, is VIXY. And that is important, and I'll explain why. So cost base of 1090. The ETF is up at 2433. You've got an unrealized profit. Okay. Now, what this insurance tool is showing me puts that we could buy on the position that would lock in profit as we just saw, be bulletproof on the position in that case. So here we could buy a March 27th, 18 and a half strike put. It's 21 days away, three weeks away for only 60 cents at midpoint. This would increase your cost basis to 1150, but you're guaranteed in the worst case scenario to get 1850 back, which means you've locked in $7, about half of the unrealized profit for 60.9% instead of 123.2, okay? So let's take a profit and loss chart there. What does a bulletproof position look like? Just what we saw, the stock could fall back down to $10. You're still guaranteed to make 60.9%, but you have 123% right now, okay? So there's two factors on using this tool. Number one, because if this is a volatility-related ETF, Octavio, just like I use the VIX calls, I don't buy the shares. Sam uses UVXY. But when these things spike because of the market uncertainty that we've had, now everything gets a little bit more expensive. If this was three, four months ago, and you had brought me a stock that was up 120%, we could probably go 90 days out in time, 120 days out in time, buy an at-the-money or just slightly out-of-the-money put option on that stock and probably have locked in 100% of the 123 unrealized profit. We'd only be giving up maybe 6 or 7% total because volatility was lower and it was a standard stock. We are giving up a lot in this case because it's a volatility ETF. What is one way that you could lock in more profit? In this case, well, just like I always say, if you've got 10 calls, you've bought 10 calls in this position and you're joining my webinars, you say, hey, um, okay, I, I'd like to uh, get more profit on this, or I'd like to lock in some of the profits on this. Oh, okay, sorry there. That's all right. We'll take that back. Misprint, and that's okay. Um, this is going to be different. Octavia's real price was nineteen ninety. Okay, that's fine. Still got a there. And 22% unrealized profit. There's that pretty much same straight, oh, those are deep in the money. But going at the money with the 24, 25 strike in that range, we could still lock in about a third of it. And that's because they're kind of expensive. Okay, the 21 day out March 26, nah, gives us about 30% of the unrealized. And the 30 put puts in about 9.7, but it's awfully high. Okay, and then going further out, once we get to it, a lot of strikes here. But once we start getting out to April and the lower strikes, you start seeing a negative locked in profit. That means you're carrying a small risk in this case. Okay. So, and you, you did this to hedge your other ETFs and it works great. Absolutely. Uh, Sam has had a luck with UVXY. I prefer to use the VIX calls. Um, and you're mentioning here with this. So it worked out as a great hedge. Now, I don't know your portfolio, Octavian. I don't really need to. I don't want to get too in-depth into that. So the puts have become expensive, just like the VIX puts are expensive. And a lot of questions come in during the webinars to say, hey, Mike, you know, you had VIX calls at one point and you sold them, or with the VIX so high now, if I think it's going to pull back down, are you buying puts? And the answer is no, for the same reason you're seeing here. 
because the volatility of the volatility ETFs are so high, we're paying a fair premium for the put options and for the call options at this point, which means locking in the gains a little bit tougher. Um, so I see your problem though. I think this is too deep in the money for a hedge. Yes, it would lock in 12% of the profit, but any profit beyond that and gain it further hedge, you're not going to see because it's pretty much hedged out at 35. What do I mean by that? You had mentioned that you're using this as a hedge for your ETFs. This April 35 put is pretty far out in time, 28 days or so out in time. But you see where, where I'm going here. If, if, you, if VIXY goes up to 28 on Monday or Tuesday or sometime next week, has another move up in that case where your ETFs are falling down, you've got this put in place that's losing money. You're gaining four points here, but you're pretty much at about the same hedge that you were or close to it with the other ETFs falling down. So that could be pretty tricky. Um, I, I understand the risk there, but of course, if you do protect it with one of those lower strikes, you're only protecting 12, 15% or so. Um, I think the highest was 12. You're only protecting 8% or so of the unrealized 22.3% profit. So now comes a tricky, tricky port here. Uh, you don't, I don't think you want to do that. Okay, let me go back to our profit and loss chart. There it is. Octavio says, can I sell another put at $1 above the one I'm buying? I wouldn't do that here. In this case, why? Because you're buying an in-the-money put. If you sell one higher, you're selling an in-the-money put. And even though you have the in-the-money put to hedge it, what's one thing that can happen with a deep in-the-money put? You can be assigned at any time. Be forced to buy shares of VIXY at 37 your broker may exercise the 36 to close you out, but now your hedge is gone. And you only got the dollar back from the debit, depending on what it was. It's not going to give you the position you want. Let's look at it. Let's go to the 36 or 37 strike. Uh, April 3rd, I believe I was in. And I, ooh. Oh, well, in this case, you can't. I apologize for that. They haven't released, I don't think, UVXY, VIXY strikes higher than 35. At least I don't see them here. Maybe they'll be available on Monday, but I don't see them here. That, let me look shorter term. That can't be right. Oh, no, it, it stops at 26. They haven't released a higher series yet with the movement. Wow. Okay. So um, in that case, yeah, I don't think I would do it. I don't think you'd like the graph as a hedge. It's going to cap the hedge one direction or the other, and I don't think that's what you want to do. And I don't think doing a bear put debit spread in this case, that's what you'd be doing. So he says, oh, well, let me buy two and sell one. So even if available, if you bought two of these 35, 36s and sold one higher, you still have a bear put debit spread with this sort of position here. So it still gives you this, but again, this profit is if it drops, not if it moves up. So you'd be paying a debit into this, which would lower this hedge down into the cost base. It's not by a lot. That's an exaggeration drawing there. But I don't think adding that as a ratio spread is going to do what you want to help lock in the gains here on VXY. And I, I think the strike is too far in the money to really give you the hedge because, again, if VXY starts to move up, what does that mean? That means that the rest of the ETFs are still falling. And although you see this curve profit and loss chart at the halfway point, remember, your hedge is here. So in this zone here, if VIXY is moving up from 20 to 32, you are seeing a little bit more gain as time value still exists. But again, the ETFs might be falling further. Really doesn't kick in to start counting more of that now to get that price. And that's why I think that strike is too high. I think you should ensure this position in that case. I'm wondering again, as I mentioned, if the strike is just too high to match your goals and your needs. I don't think, let's, let's just change the graph a little bit. We already looked at this a little bit. We'll go 28 days out again, Octavio. Normally, in this case, with a stock at 24.30, I think I'd probably be focusing on the 26, slightly in the money, or possibly the 25. Okay. I think that's what I might be doing to ensure it. Yeah, see, that only gives me an, a 5%, but it's still 5%. So if the ETFs recover, 
you can still have a 5% gain on the entire VXY position while the ETFs are still going up. That's the benefit of doing it this way. All right, now, but buy two of them and sell one higher, which is going to be an in the money, deeper in the money now, bull put credit spread, all right? Let's go to the, ugh. <laughs> sorry, I didn't realize, I kept thinking there was going to be a 28 there, I forgot it jumped to 30, but that's okay, I sell the 30 now for midpoint at 725, I'm paying 960 for that, so we get into this position, but see, notice what it did, because of the margin requirement and risk of the now in the money bull put spread from 30 to 26 at $4, you're out of bulletproof status. Got to cover that margin requirement in this case. So you knew you do have a max risk now of 1.7%. It's only 1.7%. Might give you a little bit of oomph to the upside. But again, remember this 30 put that I sold is in the money and I could be assigned any time. My broker may have to exercise that extra 26 put that we bought in this case. Now the risk here is that if it moves up a little bit more, this scenario that you're talking about, if it says, if VIXY says it goes to 27, 27, 50, 28, this is out of the money now. This is in the money. Now if you're assigned early on this, you, you have to buy more shares of VIXY. Okay? And so now you've got X amount of shares protected this way. Two puts here that are now out of the money, so you can't exercise. Why would you exercise at 26 if you get 27.50 tomorrow? You could turn around and sell those shares right away. You do have the protection with the 26 extra put on those new shares of the position because the short put is gone. You've now got double married put positions. That is correct. But how much cost would that be from the number of contracts you're doing? Is that your goal is to end up owning more shares in this case? Okay. All right, so that's that's where we're looking at in this scenario. That's why I don't think it's such a great idea because of the outcomes in a whipsaw market that are potential, that yes, you'd still have protection if you're forced to buy more shares, but that is an outcome because you're starting with that put in the money. If you do out of the money, then you're creating the bear put debit spread I mentioned to avoid the early assignment, okay? All right. All right. All right, there. So, um, all right. Sorry. So that that that's my thoughts on that. Uh, in that case, there on the the position, Octavio. When we're talking about the protection, it's it's hard to say. I don't think this is the right protection for you. And we saw that using that thirty-five put gave you the highest protection, but I think it's too deep in the money. I think you might want to focus on this mid range in the insurance tool. But again. The reason you're having some difficulties is because of the increased volatility, which is inflating the prices, which sort of takes us to Ben's question. Is volatility is too high to open a married put? What is the best way to bottom fish and still be protected? I don't know if I'd bottom fish now, uh, personally. I can't give any direct trading advice along those lines, but that's not something I'm looking to do, especially without protection in it. Um, what I'm going to say, Ben, is... Um, what I want you to do is go to uh, YouTube. Hold on one second here. I don't think I'm signed in, and if I am, I'll get out. Just give me one second. I know you're not seeing the screen here. Let me log out. Okay, so as you know, Ben, you, you probably know our page, um, but you can do the basic YouTube search for power options. Now, oh, that's not what you wanted to click, is it? Not at all. Sorry. Go to the channel. All right, there we go. And go to videos. Okay, and we don't talk about your direct credit. You were asking, is there a low-cost way to bottom feed and have insurance? Well, I'm not going to recommend it, but... In relation to the, the, the question Octavio posed with this ratio, buying two of those puts and selling one at a higher strike to sort of hedge it, having that deep in the money bull put credit spread, which I don't necessarily recommend, but with protection already, is that a few days ago, if you haven't watched it yet, 
we, we presented low cost strategies for volatile markets. Okay. So this was a question that was posed. If I expected the stock to jump up or continue down, what are some low cost strategies, like low risk, low monetary costs that I could use in this case? So just go to power options, click on videos, the one low cost strategies for volatile markets. Take a look at that. But it doesn't necessarily work well as a hedge. And there's some other concepts here. How should we hedge your portfolio? That was from two weeks ago or a week ago. But this plays perfectly into comment Sam made a few hours ago, a few hours ago, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> 30 minutes ago or so, which relates to anything. All the discussions we've had, and it's something you've heard me say, and Sam has reiterated, Sam commented, only trade with a small chunk of your portfolio not to get hurt. And this was related to the double diagonal questions, but he made other comments later on when we were talking about this. Don't lose too much. When explosive upside comes, you need to go in full to increase your portfolio even higher than what is today. Capital preservation is the most important. So Ben, yes, I understand it. We want to protect our capital. I'm using those married puts, but it looks like it's too expensive right now. But at the same time, I don't want to cheapen the insurance I could have and take too high of a risk by trying to get a lower cost by combining ratio spreads to a married put with a butterfly twist and all of that complicated stuff. Okay? If you found a stock that you like, that you think is going to recover, even though they're expensive now, those puts further out in time are likely to work in your favor. By the way, um, I don't know if it's true today, but earlier this week, Ernie and I were having a discussion. Uh, Tuesday or Wednesday of last week might have been a great time for opening calendar spreads. And this is in relation to what you're saying as well, because there was so much, um, there's so much fear in the near term that going out six to eight months, 10 months into the leaps, the vol it was perfect setup for what you'd theoretically look for in a diagonal calendar spread or a double diagonal. The options you'd be selling in the near term, which is really risky, don't get me wrong, because you have a capped upside in either direction in a whipsaw market that can be dangerous. But the theoretical structure matched one of the main goals where the near term volatility was so high, but buying a leap further out in time, the preferred length we use for a married put, 150, 210, 180 days out in time or more, the volatility was lower at the same strike. You had a skew where the near-term volatility was much higher. doesn't mean you're going to experience a profit because the market swing is going to dictate gain or loss in the positions, not just because you have the right volatility structure, the right delta structure, the right gamma structure. The movement's going to dictate the profit. But it's sometimes a structure that we haven't seen in a while with the market going straight up when we had the strong market before we before this, but you know, and we had hiccups all along the way. But when you had that good two or three month trend of the market moving up, the volatility in the near term was lower than what was in the far term. But now with the recent activity, you've got the structure of diagonal spread investor will look for where the near term volatility is much higher than the far term. And a question comes in and says, well, what married puts would you open right now? Well, I, I'd keep the same thing. I'd just go into married put. I'd go into search. Oh, nothing's here. Why is there nothing here? The same reason why if I go into the bull puts, why I didn't open any positions on Monday, which was my new cycle. Number one, the market conditions weren't right. Number two, nothing matched the criteria because there were no stocks. Well, Monday afternoon there were, but at the beginning of Monday, there were no stocks that were above, had a three-day positive MACD and were above their SMA 20 after Friday's move. This is very same. The positions that do match this criteria, there's probably nothing right now where the stock is trading above its SMA 50. There we go. Wendy's, 168 days out, 6.6%. .6%, that's right in my wheelhouse. I don't consider that too expensive. Stock's at 1919, 21 strike. That's a good one. Uh, okay, good one numbers. I'm not saying Wendy's is a buy. I'm not, I don't make those calls, okay? <laughs> but... And I right now, you see that I wouldn't open a married put because I want it to match the criteria that I've used since 2008 that has worked well for me. Taking that one filter out, sure, there may be things that are rebound. I don't know if we're at the bottom yet. I don't know if now is the right time to start buying. But I could miss opportunities, and I'll be the first to admit that. Like even Target, 315 days out at an 8% risk, that's pretty good. That's reasonable for 315 days, I believe. That's a reasonable risk. Um, yeah, okay, Comcast, oh, that's 315 days out. Normally, if I go, okay, it's JP Morgan, 196 days out, 
okay, so normally if I went 180 days out and a strike or two in the money, I'd expect to be around 4 or 5% risk. So it is a little bit higher. Still only 7.6% risk, well within my preferred criteria, well within my wheelhouse for a new married put position. I wouldn't mind opening these positions. I wouldn't mind the risk that's here. But I didn't see any results that matched my full criteria. So I wouldn't do that. But check out that video on the YouTube bin that I mentioned there, the uh, low-cost strategies for volatile markets. You'll see some of the pros and cons of doing it. And you can take some of those ideas and overlay it into a profit and loss chart and see that, hey, maybe you got insurance for a little bit less, but it's not going to insure your position the same way. And this goes back to Sam's point again, is that the, uh, yes, the puts are over expensive, okay, and they, they are extremely expensive right now, but that's why he stays with the ETFs as his hedge rather than buying the calls. And this is one of the things that buying the contra ETFs, I'm sorry, that, that Sam's talking about, contra ETFs as well, that's an advantage is you're not paying into extra time premium uh, in that case, okay? You're not worried about the flux or the loss of volatility. You're hedging straight with that as well. Yeah, and, and this is just another general market comment here is, uh, from Sam, of course, is that in 2008 and 9, when the market was 56% low, the put buyers lost money because the puts were too overpriced. So it was too expensive, and then it started to, even with a further decline, they didn't make up for the volatility as the volatility started to settle. Uh, of course, he goes on to say that the um, it's just like when they were in a bullish market, and some of the stocks are overpriced well above uh, their book value, which we saw a lot of recently, too. And the contra ETF is 60% uh, now uh, with the market conditions, so the market fluctuations in that case. Okay, I'll get back there. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, it was just here. So, again, I mean, there are some staples that are in this list. Once I took out, I know all of these names except for three, I'd say. No. Two. I don't know Investment Inc., ENV, and I don't know Synchrony Financial. I can guess what they do, <laughs> I, but I'm not familiar with those stocks. Never come up in a conversation, never had a customer trading them. I know all of the others. So these are like good staple stocks that are depressed and still carry a reasonable risk. I mean, Oracle, that's not bad. A 7% risk for 315 days, but I am going deep in the money. Yeah, it's five points, so about 10, 15% in the money. Uh, it's 47.37, but that is an interesting one if I think the market is going to settle soon and recover, but I think it's too early for me to say that, honestly. But if I was opening a new position today, I'd stick with this criteria. I'd know I'd have to open up that SMA because everything is depressed right now. Nothing was trading below above its SMA 50, but if I took that out to bottom feed, I'd still be looking at this list, and I still see some numbers in here I really like for the time frame. Maybe it's not too deep in the money. It's a lot. Cisco at 67. That's S-Y-Y, not um, Cisco with a C. Um, 67, 75 strike put there, 315 days out for risk of only 5.1%. And, oh, on this one, I don't have the dividend selected, so I can't see it. But if they pay a dividend, that, that's even more helpful. That's not a bad risk for 315 days. And look at the IV, though. 0.2422. That is where we expect to see JP Morgan. They're at 0.35. Bank of America's at 0.39. So these are a little higher. I'm, I'm not dissuading. You're absolutely right, Ben. They are higher. But I'm still within a reasonable range. They're not out of bounds. We're not talking about Tesla implied volatility here. We're not talking about uh, Enphase, uh, ENVH that was brought up earlier with that great premium for that covered call position we talked about earlier. That's not there. Okay. All right. Yeah. So. And that's what we want to look for in those positions. But yeah, even though it's maybe a little bit overpriced, I'm still seeing numbers for risk levels that agree with what I want. But I had to take out a factor I'd normally look for, so I don't know if now's the time to open. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for joining me. We are at 6, 10 p.m. Eastern time. We had a lot of questions that came in via email, and I even, um, I apologize, uh, skipped one. And I'm going to get to our Art Ask a Question sort of via email right before the, a little bit before the webinar started. And um, I wanted to get to that, but I'll, I'll just email him because it's a simple question, but it showcases one of the tools. Maybe I'll make my own video uh, as well. Um, yeah, Sam says bullish 2X and 3X are getting cheaper. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Chuck, Chuck says, have a great weekend. I'm like, hey, Chuck, have a great weekend. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I just want to remind everyone, I talked about it a couple times, that today's material are my thoughts on your questions designed for educational purposes, increasing investing performance and options knowledge. Any stocks or options discussed today should not be taken as direct trading suggestions or recommendations. I'm likely not opening any Mary puts on Monday, even though I like those numbers. I do agree with the structure that we saw perhaps on that insurance tool or on the end phase position, adding a put to it to protect the position, even if we're not locking in as much protection we had initially hoped. But again, it's better to be protected than not, even protected on a hedge on your broader market. Um, so I just want to make that clear. Options do involve risk, as we saw and have seen. It may not be suitable for all investors. If you like some of the tools that you saw today, we didn't get into the search too much, but we did see some of the positions that would come up in the search, the defaults, and changing some of the criteria. A lot of emphasis on the benefit of the portfolio tools for helping you analyze rollout opportunities, adjustments, and more. But you can take a 14-day free trial with no credit card necessary. Just go to PowerOp.com, put in your name and email address. You have full access to the Power Options tools for 14 days. No risk of being billed or anything along those lines. We discussed earlier for Riz, of course, the subscription levels that are available after your 14-day free trial. You can just go to that subscription page. They start at $45 per month for end-of-day data. And then, of course, um, $65 for the delayed service and... Um, the historical access to the back testing tools goes up to 100 per month. And we do offer real time in the premium service, which includes everything. We already talked about the webinars page for free education. We pointed you to YouTube. You can just go to those recent videos that we talked about for Ben, but there's a lot of wealth of information. You can search even by terms. You want it to look on power options for covered calls, naked puts, naked put management. Just type in your search. You're going to find a lot of good videos there for those topics. You can also look at the blog, blog.powerop.com, a lot of free education there that you can search through with keywords as well. All right, so let me just take a last view here, but if you do have uh, uh, any further questions, I don't see any last minute questions coming in, but we're pretty much at that time anyway. Um, but if you think of any questions over the weekend, please feel free to send me an email at any time, support at powerop.com, or you can reach me at support at radioactivetrading.com as well. As we mentioned for Riz, I'm sorry I missed your calls. I did attempt to call you back today, but now that I've got your name and email, I'll be able to uh, confer with you and further with your questions. Uh, I didn't have that from the phone message that you left, so I did try to call you back, uh, but you weren't available, and that was probably my fault, for call my fault for calling too early. But anyway, you can always reach us during market hours at 302-992-7971. And remember, trial members and subscribers can always schedule a coaching session at any time, just going right to that link, scheduling the next available time. Uh, ben uh, says, have a wonderful weekend. Uh, ben, thank you. You have a wonderful weekend as well. Sam, thank you, and thank you for your comments and helping me through the presentation. Octavio, thank you. Thank you for your questions. I enjoyed it. It was a good, spirited discussion. Uh, Maurice says, have a good weekend, everyone. Have a good weekend, Mike. Maurice, thank you, and thank you for your questions as well. Whew. Take care, everyone. We'll see what next week has in store for us, and I look forward to getting these videos posted for you. Hopefully, I'll have them available by Monday, by Sunday, hopefully, as well, some of this, some of the portions of this archive presentation. And I look forward to seeing what next week has in store for us and your questions for next week as well. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you soon.